Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Well, I finished my second washstand slash bedside table here in my master bedroom, finally. I put off the project for a bit simply because there was about a billion things on my to-do list, but I finally prioritized it because I wanted to have them done so I could check them off. And I could not be happier with the results that I was able to get. Although they are not exactly the same, they are similar enough that it works really well in my beautiful cottage style slash farmhouse bedroom. However, I do have some choice words about the process that I used to strip this washstand. But without further ado, let's get into the process that I used to strip the washstand. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail as to if I would and would not recommend this process going forward. Remember that time I told you to never do stripping with oven cleaner in your house? Well, I'm about to break that rule because I was going to do this outside and it is now pouring down rain and thunder and lightning. So that's not gonna work. Let us take this and turn it into a more natural look, just like the one that I did previously. If you haven't seen that one, I'm gonna go ahead and put that card up here that you can watch that process. I stripped the paint off of that one in a totally different process. This one just has its original stain and varnish on it. So I'm going to strip that to try to make it look the same as the other one. So I'm breaking my rule. Let's see how it turns out. I'm praying I do not like asphyxiate myself with all of the nasty chemicals. But anyway, let's get to the job. So I'm gonna do the drawers and the doors separately from the piece itself. So to start, I'm gonna do the top and then when I have stripped that clean and washed it, I will move on to the sides and pray that this does not have, doesn't cause me to have breathing problems. Okay. I'm also gonna to try to not get it on my shower stuff. So I'm gonna spray in this direction, away from my brand new shower nozzle and all of that jazz. All right, here we go. <coughs> now we're gonna let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. And I turned on the fan because stupidly, I forgot that it really gets strongest about a minute after you start spraying. You don't smell it at first, but it comes on strong. So let's just watch it and see what it looks like. six o'clock in the evening. Finally, the sun is not trying to snatch the soul straight out my body. It has been so hot here. I'm sure it's been hot wherever you are too. I am trying to finish this wash stand. Now, 
I did not think that this one would be the difficult one. All I needed to do was basically strip the old finish off and then sand, re-varnish. I thought it was gonna be simple, guys, but I am starting to learn that the things that you think are going to be the simplest ones actually end up being the longest process, seriously. Now, this is not paint stripping, obviously, so that process was easier, but this is oak. So the minute that I introduced water to this oak wash stand, it got like a bleached look to it, which is not what I am going for. I was trying to make them match more. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to sand it. It is taking a lot of sanding to try to get it down to that clean finish that I am looking for. I just want matching nightstands. Well, not even actually matching. I just want them to look sort of similar. So this is what it looks like so far. It's not bad, but it feels very, very porous. So we're going to sand it and see if we can get it down to looking really nice again. This is what I want, and this is what it's got. I feel like I achieved the weathered oak look that everybody is wanting, except I'm not wanting it. So all of that sanding to try to get down to that lighter oak color. My goodness, guys. It is really, it's really working on me. All right, so I'll just be over here sanding my little heart out until I get the results that I want and I will check back in with you when I get it down to the perfect oak raw wood I'm wanting. <sighs> See you soon. Back at it another day. I have been sanding for the last hour or so, 80 grit and 120 grit. And I finally have it looking decent. Like I am satisfied with this. I feel like I got it fairly close to the one that I have in my bedroom, but this door right here was already breaking. And so I'm going to have to repair this before I can do anything further. And so for that, I am going to use some wood glue and some clamps. Let's figure that situation out before we move on. Cracking in multiple different spots, unfortunately. So, so. it's got a line over here, a line over here lines down here and then it's also coming apart right there so it's gonna take quite a bit of glue and clamps tight to give it some more stability so that we can put this all back together and use some polycrylic to seal it and be done with it oh my goodness this one has been um, an interesting project to say the least so i'm going to pull it apart as far as i can without breaking it and try to squeeze some glue into these cracks. And yes, I will have to sand this again. I'm gonna make quite a mess with the glue, but it's okay. I'm gonna get my clamp. and here's the door it has been glued and clamped you can't even tell that it had a crack in it anymore really i mean if you're looking really closely you can kind of see it right there but otherwise not really i went ahead and did a layer of polycrylic 
So me, I got the first coat of polycrylic done. I did coat two coat tote. I did two coats on the top and then one coat on the rest of it. And I feel like that's good. The top is going to be the most used part of it. The rest of it doesn't really need to have extra protection for any reason, so. I just have this one last door to do polycrylic on, and I'm gonna do that right now. So now that you've seen the entire process and how much work it was to get to this point, you might ask me, would I recommend doing this, this type of process on a piece of furniture going forward? And yes, I would. Even though using oven stripper did not specifically work like super easy on this type of project, I have a feeling it might've been due to it being oak. I had to contend a lot with a weathered oak look on the wood and I think it's probably because of the amount of water that using oven stripper recommends. So going forward, I probably would not use the oven stripper method on an oak piece of furniture. I probably could have gotten the same results with less effort and less time if I had simply sanded it or used a chemical stripper. But I'm extremely happy with how it turned out overall and I'm very, very happy to have it finished and to be able to check it off my list. But let me know in the comments how you think this turned out. I would love to know your opinions on the matter. Piece by piece, this master bedroom is coming together, um, although it has taken me years. I did a previous video about decluttering my master bedroom and I went into a little bit of detail on the kinds of projects that I've already worked on in here and I will go ahead and link that up here for you and you can watch that when you're done here. But other than that guys, thank you so much for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you aren't, be a part of this community here I'm trying to build at Capture in Wonderland and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this content. All right guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.